here are the supplies that you're going to need to get started working with epoxy resin. So first off, we do need some gloves. I do use these uh, nitrile powder-free gloves because you ever had it where you put the gloves on and then you got all that space at the end and then it's really hard messing with stuff. So make sure you get your size. And alcohol. So what I actually use, I found these at the dollar store and they are very wet wipes, disinfecting wipes, and they do great with resin. But another thing you can use is just alcohol and uh, paper towels. And of course, you are gonna need resin. So the way resin comes, it, it's in two parts. You have the resin, and then you have the hardener. I did buy this resin on Amazon as well. This one is the Beast Bond, which I've been using for a while now, and I really, really like it for the smaller projects. And it does come in a kit. So you get the resin, the hardener, as well as measuring cup, which is a very important supply to have so that you can make sure you're doing equal parts and another item you're gonna need is either a spatula or a stirring stick. And this also comes in the resin kit. But if you don't have this, you can also use popsicle sticks. Next, you are going to need your silicone molds. I have a variety right here. There are several different molds you can buy and silicone is something that resin won't actually stick to. With resin, one of the issues we have are bubbles. So we're going to have to get rid of the bubbles and what we need to do that is both toothpicks and a heat gun. And I have seen other people using either a torch or a lighter. I don't like to use those because they can mess up your molds if the molds get too hot or if the resin gets too hot. So I do use this heat gun. Another thing you're going to need are silicone mats and I did buy these off of Amazon as well these are called doming mats and this one works really really well and the resin comes right off of it but I found that this one for some reason the resin is a lot harder to get off of so we're not going to be using this one we will use this one uh, as you notice we do not have any colors in our little set today in the future, I'm actually going to put out a video that goes through the different kinds of ways that you can color your resin. When it comes to epoxy resin, there are several different types. It all depends on the project that you're working on to what kind of resin you want to get. You do want to check labels and make sure you are getting the right resin for the project you are working on. This one is best for crafts. It says it can be used for large projects, but I've done a large project with it and you do want to get a different resin. It's called deep pour resin if you're going over two inches of um, depth in the, with the resin because it just creates way too many bubbles and ruins your project. So you will find that the resins that are meant for smaller crafts are not meant for deep pours. So this resin is a one-to-one -one ratio and that's what we need our measuring cup for so that means we're going to pour equal parts resin to equal parts hardener and you can get those little cups you know the ones like when you, you take cough medicine and they're about that big and they got the little measurements on them you can use those for your small projects on our measuring cup, we have the milliliters. If you pour 100 milliliters of the resin, you're gonna want to pour 100 milliliters of the hardener. And I have seen people pour the hardener and the resin in two separate cups, then put them together, but that can throw off your ratio if some of the hardener or the resin gets stuck in the cup. So I do pour it in the same container for this project, I will be doing two different molds. I'm going to do the crystal and the small heart. And before you mix your resin, you do 
want to get an idea of how much resin you are going to be using. So I'm going to be pouring 200 milliliters total and whatever I have left over I'm going to use in a separate mold uh, outside of this video. And I'm not going to waste because epoxy resin is expensive. Notice I do have my little alcohol pad out here um, ready for cleaning because when I open these containers I do get resin on my gloves and I like to wipe it off. So let's get started. We'll start with the resin and we're going to pour 100 milliliters. So when you start pouring you do want to pour slow because this can creep up on you and you can go over the line. Right now we're going to add 100 milliliters of the hardener. So once it gets up to that 200 milliliter mark, I'm going to stop. It never fails that I get it on my gloves. And now we're going to take our stir, our spatula, and start stirring the resin. And we do want to stir it slowly because the faster we stir it, the more bubbles that are going to get trapped in there and the harder it's going to be to get those bubbles out. So as you see, as it's stirring, you can see little lines going through it. So we're going to keep stirring until it's just crystal clear. That's usually about three or four minutes. And you do want to be aware of the temperature in the room. If it gets closer to 70 and below, the resin starts getting cold and it can not only extend the curing time, which, the, which is the time that it takes for the resin to get completely solid to where you can take it out of the mold and actually you know, display it, but it also creates more bubbles in the resin and the more bubbles you get, it is so difficult to get those bubbles out of there. And while you're stirring, you do also want to make sure you're scraping the sides to make sure everything gets mixed and you want the bottom to be scraped as well so that no parts of the, either just the resin or just the hardener are still left on their own. They're all mixed together. All right. And you'll see there are a few little bubbles in there, but like I said, we'll get rid of those. But it is very clear now there aren't any of those white streaks in there. So we are ready to pour our resin. What we're gonna do, we're gonna put our molds on our mat. So if there is any resin that ends up pouring over, then it'll get on the mat and it won't get on my beautiful wood surface. <laughs> so let me take this and we're gonna pour slowly. And then I'm gonna stop about halfway through because I have found that if I take these molds that have more of the intricate details and I just sort of squish them like this and move them and squish them, it will get those little air bubbles to come out of the bottom surfaces there. Because if those bubbles stay there, then the resin can't get in those spots and it's going to create little gaps in your mold and it can co completely ruin your project. So see, we've worked a lot of those to the surface, which is great because we grab our heat gun and then with our heat gun, it's going to pop all of those bubbles that are on the surface. And I can see I have just a few more bubbles left in there, so I'm going to work it a little bit more. See, this is also what our toothpicks are for, because I see this one little stubborn bubble right there that doesn't want to come out. So if I use my toothpick, I can move the bubbles and get them to come to the surface so I can use the heat gun on them and blast those little suckers. Right, gonna blast it one more time with the heat gun. Let's look at 
looking good. So we're going to pour the rest until the mold is full. And then we're going to pour the heart. Heart is not, it doesn't have all these little intricate spots like this one does. So we don't need to really squish it around. We can just use our toothpick, come in, get those big bubbles to come to the surface. And remember, you do have 40 minutes of working time here. I have also noticed that the thicker your molds are, the faster it does harden and it does cure. So you have to be aware of that as well because the thinner ones, the smaller ones, uh, they don't get as hot as fast. And so they do stay liquid a little bit longer. So if you're working with the resin and you're leaving your measuring cup set aside and you have a ton of resin in it, it is going to heat up faster and cure faster. So if you're working a while with the smaller projects, you will want to split up your resin into a couple different measuring cups just so it's a little bit thinner so it won't heat up as fast. And you will find that, you know, there are sometimes bubbles that they just happen and you're not able to get them out. And that's fine as long as they're not like all over the place. You just do the best that you can. All right, we're going to hit these with the heat gun again. Okay, and you see, I did have the crystal that spilled over just a little bit, but that's what this mat is for. The final step is just to let them dry. just want to add one extra little tidbit of information in here before we end up seeing the finished product. So when you go to clean, because you want to clean the resin off of your measuring cup and your spatula before it dries. So that's where I take these disinfectant wipes that I got from the dollar store and it just wipes it right off. Super easy. Now it's time for the reveal. Drum roll, please! The silicone will not stick to the resin. So all you have to do, pop that thing right out. Love it, love it. And now it is time for the crystal. And this one's kind of a softer mold, so it bends better than the heart one. So you can just pry it right out of there. There you go. Very pretty. And see, we didn't get a lot of air bubbles in there either. So it turned out great. so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video and got some benefit out of it, please hit that thumbs up and share with any of your crafting friends. And don't forget to subscribe so you can catch my future videos. And the next one for sure will be how to color resin. There are several different ways you can do this. So hit that subscribe so you get the notification when that video comes out. And thanks again. Bye-bye.